Hi students, so today I'm going to be going over externship information, externship forms, externship requirements, and things like that. So the externship is a minimum requirement of three months and 200 hours. So that is a dual requirement. You cannot do your externship any quicker than three months and any quicker than 200 hours. Um, your externship could, could potentially be longer than 200 hours and longer than three months. Um, those days and times that you extern are going to be decided between you and your externship office based upon your availability and their needs. Um, if you do about if you do two days a week, which is about 16 hours, then you'll get your 200 hours and three months done at this exact same time. If you do one day a week, which is about eight hours, it'll take you six months to get 200 hours. So then you would have also reached that three month minimum and 200 hour minimum. Like I said, though, that will be discussed and chosen between you and your externship office. Keep in mind that your externship office may want you in the building more. So they could say, oh, we want you three days a week. We want you four days a week. Um, and that's just something you guys will decide. Um, it is better, in my opinion, to get that those extra days if you have the availability for it, because that's just extra practice, extra hands-on time, um, and that could never hurt. So just make sure that you're discussing what you can and can't do with your externship office as far as your availability. Um, but please keep in mind that it is a minimum of three months and a minimum of 200 hours. So students do have up to six months from the last day of class to complete their externship. Um, and students are required to at least start their externship latest by one month from the last day of class. So you can start looking for those externships, getting your forms and stuff together um, around section two, which is about halfway through the course, because at that point you do have enough knowledge on, you know, x-rays, charting, impressions, tooth names, numbers, surfaces, things like that to be of help to an office. So we always recommend students to start looking around section two. It may take you a few times of you putting out your resume and paperwork and stuff like that to actually land an office, which is normal. Um, so that's why it's better to start sooner rather than later. Start looking around section two. You have up until, like I said, one month from the last day of class to actually begin your externship. And then you have six months from the last day of class to actually complete your externship, which once again is a minimum of three months and 200 hours. So why an externship is required is because you have to, you know, in the program, you're mainly working on typodonts. There is some stuff that you are allowed to do on one another that won't cause harm to you or your teeth. Um, but to actually work alongside a dentist, work with other assistants, work on patients, um, that is where everything is going to come together and you're really going to understand a procedure. So this externship is a huge part of your learning. So the externship forms can be found in the handout section. So when you're logged into your account, go into the handout section. And if you scroll to the very bottom, you'll see this here where it'll say externship forms. So this is one of the spots that you can find um, your externship paperwork. You can also go to the forms tab on the website. So once again, when you're logged in, select forms, and there will be a bunch of stuff here for you as well. And then you can also go to section three in the website, scroll down, and that's where it will also have some of this externship information for you. So what information you'll want to actually take to the interview is going to be your resume and your cover letter. So we do have samples of those in the back of the classroom in a binder. So you can look at that and reference that to be able to you know, come up with a good one. There will be a portion in the program where you are going to submit it for us to review. But here are just some helpful tips and tricks for making it. It is a requirement that under schooling, you list Academy for Dental Assistance. We're in St. Petersburg, Florida. And then the month and year that you started. So the expanded functions dental assistant certification and the dental radiology certification is what you will receive once you complete your externship. So because you haven't received those yet, 
when you add this schooling to your resume, you'll want to make sure that you add pending because that is pending the completion of your externship. So this is an a super important piece to have. There also is some samples here um, of an objective, one with that's entry level with education listed. Um, so these are also samples that you can look at as well. So the externship information can also be found here. This is just going to kind of list and outline, you know, what is required of you, what forms you need, um, and things like that. So like I said, things you'll provide to the interview is gonna be the resume and cover letter. You're also gonna to wanna to bring up the letter to the school. So this letter to the school, let me go ahead and pull it up for you. This letter to the school is just going to outline what is expected of you in your externship. Um, and like it's three months, it's 200 hours, you have up to six months to complete. Um, you're required to do, you know, 12 of those 16 procedures on the 200 hour evaluation form. So this is going to be the third piece of information you want to bring to your externship office. Another thing that you will want to bring is this sample. Um, this is a sample, but your declaration page to your liability insurance. This was one of the forms that you were required to submit within the first three business days of registering. So you'll want to make sure that they have this as well. And then the next piece of information is going to be your hours log. So this hours log is going to help you keep track of how many days or months, how many hours and stuff like that that you've completed at your externship. So every time you're at your office, you'll put the date you were there, the total number of hours, and then you'll have a supervisor initial. So this could be the dentist, the office manager, it could be um, the lead assistant, but someone's gonna wanna sign that every single day after you have completed that day. Over here is where you'll be able to add up and total your hours. So let's just say one day you did eight hours, the next day you did another eight, you would put 16 here. So that way it's easier for you to keep track. And then once you can tell on your form that you've had three months and 200 hours at minimum, then you know it's time to submit your externship paperwork into the school. You'll also want to make sure that you bring this 200 hour evaluation form. So this form here is going to let the office know what is required of you in your externship. As you can see in this portion here, it says the student has received training and instructions on the following procedures, and you are required to do at least 12 of 16 of these. And then you're not just doing them one time in your externship, you should be doing these procedures numerous times throughout your three month and 200 hour externship. Um, so you don't have to put the number of times that you did it. You will just put an X or a check or something like that to show that you've done it. But to get the most out of your learning, make sure that they know up front, hey, I have to do at least 12 of 16 of these numerous times. Another reason why you want to bring this form in and show them during the interviewing process is because sometimes not every dentist will do everything on the list, which is fine. But in order to complete your externship, you have to know and have done 12 of these 16 procedures. So letting them know off the bat that you need to know these things will save you and that externship office time if that's something that they can't do. Um, on this form, you will also put your externship dates, the start and end date. Remember, it has to be a minimum of three exact months. So if you start on January 18th, your externship cannot be completed any quicker than April 18th because that's three exact months. And then you will put your total number of hours here. And remember, this is why we're keeping track of this information on our hours log so we can have the exact start, the exact end date, as well as the exact number of hours completed. On the bottom of this form, this is just where the office is gonna do an evaluation of the student. The dentist will place their ratings here. Would you recommend this student for hire their circle yes or no add some comments and that dentist will put their license number and signature on here as well so another thing is going to be the x-ray certification application so your dentist is going to fill out their name and license number on page three and then sign and date on page five 
So this whole nine page application is going to be required to fill, be filled out, but just to show when you're bringing this to the office, you'll just say the dentist is just gonna put their name and license number on three, and then they are going to put their signature and date on page five. So this radiology certification application is just going to vouch that you went to a board approved dental assisting school. So at the end of your externship, this will have to be filled completely out. Like I said, this first page is gonna be um, your name and address, the dentist's name, as well as their license number, the dental practice address. This is going to be your information, your externship information, which is gonna be the exact same start and end date that's on your 200 hour evaluation form, the dentist signature and date, and then the rest of the pages are going to be your background history. So you'll have to fill this out and then I'll explain what to do with this form at the end of the video. So some forms that you will have to complete throughout your externship. So there is an externship follow-up form. So this form is the student's responsibility to fill out each month at their externship. So like I said, if you start January 18th, on February 18th, this form is required to be submitted to the school via fax or email and completely filled out. So this is going to be your information here, whether you're currently externing or not, your start date at your externship, which, which once again, you will get from your hours log, and then the total number of hours you have completed thus far. Once again, you will get this number from your hours log. Over here, you are going to be putting how you feel the training you're receiving at your externship site is, whether it's satisfactory, unsatisfactory, um, and then you're going to give any comments, issues, you know, additional things that you want us to know here. And then this is just going to be your externship office's information. Down here, it's just going to be acknowledgments of your externship. So you'll just put your initials, sign, date. Like I said, you'll email or fax this form to the school every single month at your externship. So if you are only at your externship three months, then you should have submitted three forms to us. If you're there six months, then you should have submitted this form six times to us. If a student does not fill out and submit this form to the school every month, then they will be terminated because this is an, a requirement of your externship. Although the externship portion of the program, you're not here at our facility in school, you are still a student of ours. So it is important that we stay up to date with this information. We are also always in contact with your externship office. However, this is the student's responsibility to get in at least once a month at their externship site. And like I said, if we do not receive it, you will be terminated. Another one of the forms that you will fill out and send back to the school is going to be your consent to begin externship form. So once again, all of these forms can be found on the forms page in section three or in the handout section. I'm just going over them for you now in section three. Um, so this consent to be an externship form is going to be submitted to the school once you have secured an externship site. So that means once you go through the interviewing process and you have a start date, you will fill this form out and it'll have some just acknowledgements, things like that, that you wanna make sure you read and understand. The externship information here, and then this is going to be the externship policy. So you'll have to read through both of these, sign date, and when you submit it to the instructor, they will make sure that everything's filled out on that form, and then they will also sign and date. So once again, this form will be submitted once you have secured an externship site. So this form, is required to be submitted by module 20, um, which is the second to last day of class. Um, however, whenever you secure an externship site, get it into the instructors. Um, but once again, it is going to be due at a certain point in the program. If we do not receive this form, at least by module two or 20 or by the last day of class, a student will not receive their Extra, their 12-week um, certificate of completion, which is just something that you'll get that's saying congratulations for completing part one of the program. Um, that is, you know, it doesn't really hold any true value like a, your certifications after your externship would, but we do just like to award our students, you know, 
for completing that portion of the program. So you will not receive that certificate of completion until this form has been given to the school. Um, and so you just wanna make sure that you start looking around section two, because like I said, sometimes it will take applying to two or three offices to find the best fit for you um, and make sure that you are, you know, always bringing all those papers, you know, going in and telling them exactly what you need. So that way, when you do complete this externship, you have no worries. They're going to sign all the paperwork because you've already brought it up to them. You've done 12 of the 16 procedures, things like that. So on this consent to begin externship form, um, it is going to talk here about how if you have not completed your externship within six months, you will be terminated and no longer a student of Academy for Dental Assistance. It says how you cannot receive your certifications if you have not completed 12 of the 16 procedures multiple times that are on that 200 hour evaluation form. Um, just signing saying that you must also be aware that it is a minimum of three months and 200 hours and that sometimes and you could complete three months and 200 hours, but, you know, along the way, if there's things that you're calling out, um, if you're on your phone, if you're not really paying attention, things like that, you want to treat this externship like a job. So if you're, you know, hiding in the bathroom, coming back late from lunch, no calling, no showing, they're going to terminate you from your externship and you'll have to start with another office from square one because, it has to be three consecutive months under the same dentist. So this is just saying like at any point in time, this externship office could terminate me and you understand that you will have to start all the way over. Also, if you do not start your externship within one month of the last day of class, you will be required to take a one day remediation refresher course and it'll say the cost on that form. Um, and that's just because, like I said, this information is not in your long-term memory. So if you are not doing this stuff regularly, if you're not using it, you will lose it. So this is just stating you will have to initial that if you don't start it within one month from the last day of class, that's a requirement for you as well. So when you're filling this out, please make sure you're reading it thoroughly. You know what you're initialing and signing to before you submit it back into the instructor. So like I said, you can begin looking for those externships around section two. At that point, you do have enough knowledge and skills to be of help to a dental office with tray setups, instrument names, functions, you know, things like that. And then um, once you have completed your externship, the forms you will submit back to the school is going to be your 200 hour externship evaluation form. Remember, this is going to be completely filled out. 12 of 16 procedures are checked. It's a minimum of three months, a minimum of 200 hours. Everything on this form has to be completed. So you'll send this back into the school along with pages three through five of your dental radiology certification application. So remember three is going to be the office's information. Page four is your info and page five is your actual externship dates. So we, as the school only need pages three, four, and five returned. So once you have submitted those forms to us, you will need to either fax or email them. You can take a picture of them with your phone and send it over. You can fax it from your dental office, um, scan it from a printer as a PDF and email it. Um, you cannot walk in and hand them to us because these do take a while to make for you. So you will have to send them into us first so that way we can review them. So you'll want to submit both of those forms. We will review them as the office. We will review them and make sure everything looks good. All the requirements are met. Everything is filled out. And at that point in time, if everything looks correct, we will award you with your EFDA and dental radiology certifications. So I can go ahead and pull up a sample of those. So this is going to be just a sample of what your dental radiology will look like. And this is a sample of what your EFDA certification will look like. So once you receive those two certifications, with that is what you will use to go get a job. You are allowed with these two certifications, the X-ray and the EFDA, you are allowed to work under any specialty as an assistant, whether that be 
ortho, oral surgery, whether you want to stay in general, um, things like that. This These certifications allow you to branch off into any field of dentistry um, as a dental assistant and work. There is, once you receive those, these certifications, there is no, um, you know, continuing education. There is no retesting or you don't have to pay anything like that. Once you get these certifications, they are good for life here in Florida. Once we have these printed and made for you, you can either schedule a time to come in and pick up these certifications from the school, or we can mail them to you. You will just have to confirm your mailing address with us. So now, once you have completed getting the forms, you've already you know, gotten them back. This is the step where you will take a copy of your radiology certification, all nine pages of this radiology application, as well as a check or money order of $35, and you will mail that to the Florida Board of Dentistry. So with the Florida Board of Dentistry, they will mail you back your radiology certification number so that radiology certification number, like I said, just like the application is gonna go along with your certificate, just proving that you went to a board approved dental assisting school. So even if you have not received that radiology certification number from the Florida Board of Dentistry yet, you can still go and find an office to work at um, with just your EFDA and your X-ray your office may not even ask for it, but if they do happen to ask for it, you can just tell them, you know, I've submitted to the Florida Board of Dentistry. It does take about two to four weeks to get that certification number back from them. So you can just tell them, you know, I'm still waiting on it, but as soon as I get it, I can make sure to give you a copy of it. It's also super important that you keep your original certificates of your EFDA, your x-ray, and your radiology certification number where you keep other important documents um, like your birth certificate, your passport, anything like that, and give every office, or if you're you know, doing anything, just make sure you're always giving everyone copies and you are keeping your original. Alrighty, so moving forward. So a, a lot of students do have some worries about being able to actually find an externship office. So we do not do placement per se, um, however, we do have a job and opportunities board on our website. So when you're logged in, you'll select opportunities available, and this will have a list of people who are looking to hire, people who are looking for externs. Dental assistants are in such high demand right now that we have people calling us in dental offices calling us numerous times a week looking to get people into their office. So once we get their information, we post it on this Opportunity is Available page, as well as our social media. So please make sure you're keeping an eye on those types of things. On this first one here, we also have some affiliation agreements with a lot of corporate dental offices. Um, so you'll be able to see how to contact them or what offices we are affiliated with. So it's like Aspen Dental, Greenberg Dental, Coast, Went, Coast Dental, um, Florida Dental Centers, Greenberg, so there's a bunch of them here that you can reach out to. So make sure that you are using these resources to help you find an externship office. Um, there are about seven, 17, roughly 17,000 dentists here in the state of Florida. I would say um, dentists have anywhere from two to five extra or two to five assistants with them at all times, depending on how busy or slow that office is. So we haven't really run into any issues with students being able to find an externship. Um, students can also, you know, if you go to your local office, you may be able to go there. There could be one across the street from where you live where you can try and reach out to. Like I said, as long as it is a general dentist office under a Florida licensed dentist, you can complete your externship there. But you'll always want to make sure they can complete 12 of those 16 procedures. But as if they can complete 12 of those 16 procedures, it's a general office then you can go there. It doesn't have to be one that we have specifically posted or are affiliated with. If you are having struggles finding an externship office, please make sure that you are asking the instructors, that you are reaching out to the school to let us know that you are having some issues and we can help you find that office. That even goes for while you're in your externship office, if there are things that say you're asking to get into procedures, they're not allowing you to get enough hands-on time, 
Um, you want to speak to that office directly first and, you know, speak to the dentist or the office manager and see if that situation can be corrected in-house first. If it cannot or so nothing has changed, please make sure you contact the school so that way we can become involved and, you know, try and reach out to the office or, you know, give you some helpful advice on what to do moving forward. Um, always be in communication with us. I always think it's super important too that students know if the first two to three weeks, you may just be watching the flow of the office, watching how the assistants, you know, actually do these procedures alongside the dentist. Um, you may be doing a lot of sterilization, operatory cleaning, um, things like that, but that is all going to be helpful. Don't waste that time. I recommend bringing a notebook with a pen and writing down like what's in their tray setup. Cause as we've explained throughout the program, there are, you know, dentists could use a various, you know, range of certain instruments or certain things in their tray setup. So take notes, write things down that you see, ask questions to your instructors, ask questions to the office, show that you're actively participating. But like I said, keep in mind, it may be two or three weeks where you are just kind of watching them at first. If you're still watching or kind of observing more than three weeks, that's when I would bring it up to the dental office and say, hey, I really appreciate you guys, you know, showing me, you know, these types of procedures. And I appreciate you taking the time to instruct me. However, I am feeling confident and comfortable enough to start working on these things. You know, like I said, bring these types of issues up to your office first. If nothing changes, please reach out to the school. Okay, so in section three, um, there is going to be a portion where you will be taking a externship quiz. So this is just going to relay the information um, again on this page, which is the consent to begin externship page. Um, you will see here externship information. So please make sure that you review this as this is what the quiz will be on. Um, it will also have another way for you to print and review this consent to begin externship form with the requirements. I um, mean, it's super important that you, you know, understand this. So if you do have any questions on anything, um, please make sure that you ask your instructors. We will go over it numerous times throughout the 12 weeks. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, you can call the office message one of your instructors um, and we'll be here to help you out but just know that you can find everything once again on the handout section in the introduction section as well as section three um, and then we will be reviewing it quite often so if you have any questions please make sure you reach out because this information is super important thanks have a great day guys